Today I will show you how to create this kind of effect in Photoshop. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you so-called low polygon effect in Photoshop or how I like to say origami or paper mask effect. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, for this episode I will use this photo of a lion, actually I will use just a lion's head. And you can basically use anything that you want, you can use a human head or you can use a vase or a ball or I don't know, anything that you want to transform in this low polygon effect. Alright, and the base, basic principle behind uh, this is uh, to create some polygons that will fill the, in this case, the lion's face and each polygon will have its own color. And for that I will use this, as you can see, polygonal lasso tool and I will create triangles. And you will need to create triangles in this case because the triangles uh, give, give the best result for that. You don't need to create uh, squares or something like so, just triangles. And the basic thing what you need to do is just go create a triangle like so, all right? Then go and fill this uh, triangle with some color and the best thing is to fill with the average color of all colors that are uh, in this triangle here and to do that just go to the filter blur and average and now as you can see this is the average color in this uh, in this um, triangle here okay and then press ctrl command j to create that in a new layer go back to the background go back to creating a new triangle something like so and again, go filter, blur, average, or just press Control F or Command F on Mac. And that's it. Control Command J, then go back to the background and so on and so on until you're satisfied with the result, until you fill complete uh, part of the image that you want to fill. All right. But I want to make this process a lot easier because I don't want uh, to do everything manually. And I want to make it faster. So. Uh, I will create an action that will fill this automatically for us and create new layer automatically each time that uh, we press the action. And another trick that I like to use to make this uh, effect, uh, creating a uh, creation with this effect faster, it's to split image into half. I like to split uh, always if I can do that, if it's not the profile of a lion or anything else. I like to split image in half and just paint, uh, fill one half of the head with that uh, polygons and then mirror that half to the other side and I will have, have really, really nice uh, representation of the lion's head in this case or anything else that you like to create. All right, and for start, let's first use a pen tool. I like to use a pen tool and just split the lion's head into half like so. Then I, I will use Control Command key to move those points, right? And just find where is the have something like so. It's nice. And then I will, oops, I will continue uh, making this path around the line. Let's. Or this down and something like so is great. We can make selection out of that with zero uh, feather radius and press Control or Command J to extract only that part of the face. And only this is the only part that I want to convert to that low polygonal effect. All right, and I can delete this, but I will leave it for now. Okay, something like so. And what I like to do is to straighten this side here because when I flip it, if I flip it now, if I duplicate it and then just flip it horizontally, you will see it will not fit nicely. So we need to straight, straight and uh, make this line straight. So how to do that really easily and uh, precise is to go to the ruler. Let's find the ruler. It's right here. If you don't know where the ruler is and you have a newer version of Photoshop, you have this search um, uh, option here and just press and click uh, search for the ruler. Right now I will use the ruler here and just make a line along to this edge of, of uh, 
the line space, right? Something like so, and then go to the image rotation and click this arbitrary option and it will automatically uh, calculate it and it says that it will rotate 2.75 degrees counterclockwise, right? And now it's perfectly straight. That's really nice. All right, let's position somewhere here. Let's create a new solid color layer and maybe maybe greenish or I don't know, something like so, just to have a background for that. All right, and now let's create an action for this process. So how to create an action? Really, really easily. Just go to the action panel right here. If you don't see that, go to the windows and window and actions here, right? Or press the uh, shortcut Alt F9 or Option F9 on a Mac, right? And first thing what I like to do is to rename this layer where the part of the lines had it into a background. All right. And then we can start. Go to the actions, create a new group, new set, and I will name it uh, low poly, uh, poly effect, right? And now I have that group and I will create a new action in that LP just for low poly, that's great. And now what I like to do, it's say stop, go to some other layer and start recording that. First thing what I like to do is to select the background layer. See, select layer, select layer background. You cannot see, oops, you cannot see here. Now you can see. First thing that this action uh, is doing is to select, to go and select this background layer. Right, right, now let's go and use polygon lasso tool. I don't want to move the layer. That's, if you, if you make a mess like I did here, just stop the action, delete what you don't like, delete that and then start recording wherever you need to. Right now, let's go and create first triangle. I'll go here and create first triangle. And another thing now, it's a great time to show you another thing that will help us to create even better and precise triangles, it's to activate the grid here in Photoshop. So how to activate a grid, I will show you really quickly. Let's stop the action, let's delete all of this, except this first one, and let's go here to view, show, and grid. And we have this really nice grid. Now it's too dense, and to change the density of the grid, I will go to edit, preferences, shortcut is control command K to enter the preferences, and then go to grid guides, grid and slices, all right? And I will go here to grid and grid line every 25 pixels, that's okay, but I don't want this subdivision. I will put zero in subdivision, actually one or zero, one. I don't think the zero is possible. Yeah, one is at the lowest value and press okay. And now we have this really nice grid and we need to check one more thing and that's the snap to grid go to the snap to and make sure that the grid it's checked, right? And now when you go here with the polygonal lasso tool and click for the first triangle, you'll see that this will snap to those intersection of the lines. So let's create the first, let's create the first triangles like so, right? And this is the first one. But before that, what you can do to make your life even easier, it's to move this line to snap here to the grid edge, almost something like so, because I want to use this part of the image too. Right now we can start recording and go and create first triangle. Right, that's great. We set the selection. Now we will go to filter, blur, average. That's nice. Press control command J to copy that and go back to background layer. And that's it we can stop the action right here, all right? And we can go back right here to the first, uh, not the first step, but even here to the, the, the action name, LP, all right? And now we will create a new, new triangle, something like so maybe. 
can see how it's easy to snap. And now I will press F2 on a keyboard. Just a second. That's great. We need to set a keyboard shortcut for this action, right? And how to do that? Let's go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and go to the Panel Menus, then Actions, and Play Action, it's F2, right? Okay, and now the F2 is set as a keyboard shortcut for playing the action, right? And if I play the action right now, hmm, let's see what we have. Set Selection, the Set Selection, we don't need to set selection, let's delete that, and now let's go here. Okay, create a new triangle, something like this. And now press F2 and you can see automatically uh, it's creating new layer filled with the varied color and the selection is uh, back to the background layer. That's really nice and really fast um, process to, to create those triangles. And now you will create a new triangle like so, press F2 and that's it. And you only need to create triangles, press F2, create triangles, press F2. Right, the next thing what I like to address is how big those triangles are supposed to be. Well, that's a great question because uh, the bigger triangles are, the lower resolution of the model will be and the model will not be so recognizable. If you create smaller triangles, the model will be more precise, it will be higher resolution of the model and it will be more recognizable. And now you need to balance between the speed of uh, the creation, creating the model and of course the resolution that you want to achieve for the end result. The bigger triangles are, you will be faster, you will faster populate the scene, but it will not be so nice at the end. The smaller triangles are, it will be a longer process, but the end result will be better. Today I will go somewhere in between. I will create some triangles bigger, some triangles smaller. Uh, if I want uh, to have better representation of the eye, for example, here I will create small triangles around the eye and around the nose and maybe here. And I can create bigger triangles all around the head. Okay, and I will do something like this today. So now I will fast forward this because I will just try uh, start and creating those triangles. Uh, in the same way I show you right here. Let, let me show you a few more. Just create triangle like so and press F2. Create triangle and press F2. Right, and another trick to, to show you or tip is if you create two sides of the triangle and double click here, it will automatically fill that third side, create a third side and make selection for you. Sometimes that it's really good to even speed up your process or you don't need to find where that third point, third uh, edge is, right? And now I will speed up this process and see you in a few moments. All right, guys, just to address one more thing, uh, try to create triangles where the natural triangles on the image are. For example, here, this is really a nice way to create triangles because here is actually the natural triangles of this darker color and then the next triangle maybe it can be from here to here why not and try to to have in mind that uh, to, to, to follow actually those shadows parts or color parts to create really nice triangles actually this will be one nice triangle here and maybe this will be another here and so on and so on. Or here you can create maybe a few smaller and so on. So let's fast forward again. And one more tip, if you don't see pretty much uh, here the difference between actually the difference between those two triangles, you can just go here to the background layer and lower the opacity to have better representation. And now I made a mistake here and I can go and undo this, of course, and create another one. But I made a gap here because I didn't saw where this triangle ends actually. And of course, you can always uh, cor correct that at the end of the process. But now I will just go a few steps behind and just 
correct it. All right, All right, let's fast forward it again. All right, guys, now I'm trying to separate this part here from this edge part with uh, triangles. As you can see, I'm creating triangles Oops, that will separate that. And you always need to think about the surfaces that you want to separate. Here I can create bigger triangles, no problem, because this area doesn't have uh, doesn't have a lot of details but some things here you will see we will need to make a density of the grid higher to have a higher density and then we will start playing with small details and when you're playing with the small details it's a little bit harder but it's not a big deal so here I can create something like this then I will leave that for the eye and this part it's really easy because we don't have much details around here and we can create those triangles as I really like basically right let's fast forward this again and I will just try to separate this part from this part and you will see this in the speed Right guys, now those triangles here are a little bit smaller because uh, we need to pay attention to those details and I will leave these parts for later and I will just fill out this little bit bigger parts and then we will change density of a grid, let me see, because we need to populate this and the nose and the eyes a little bit with a little bit smaller triangles right let's see this is pretty much okay right I messed this up so I will undo it and you can see I messed something up actually I messed the previous one uh, we can fix that later I will purposely leave this as a gap to show you how you can fix this later and play with the rest right now right I'll fast forward this one once more to fill some other parts and then I will show you how to make smaller details. If you want to hide a grid to see what you've done, it's really easy. Just press Ctrl or Command H on a keyboard and you will have this. You just hide the grid and you will press Ctrl Command H again to reveal the grid. See, hide, reveal and that's it, All right? Let's do a few things here. All right, guys, that's it. Let me see. This is really, really nice for now. All right, and maybe just this triangle right here. I forgot this the first time, it's not good. Okay, something like this, that's great. All right, and now we can make this grid even denser. So how to do that? Let's go again to uh, grid properties, actually uh, go here to the edit, preferences, and then guides, grids, and slices. And here, here is the grid. I will. You can go and lower this number, grid line every maybe, 10 pixels and you can see the grid it's already denser but what I like to do here I will go back to 25 and just subdivide this this maybe four times and I will have really nice really really nice grid and if you don't see uh, this uh, if, if the color of the grid it's similar to the color of the background you can go and fix that too 
by going here and change this maybe to red or green. I like red, maybe red or cyan. I don't know. Anything that, that you think it's good. Maybe white here. You can always go to the custom color and choose the custom color. Maybe white here will do the job. I don't know. Or, or no. Let's go back and leave. Leave. Maybe red. Yeah. Yeah. Red is pretty much good. Right. And now we need to create smaller triangles. And again, you will try to, to see where, where those triangles ends. And from there, start a new triangles like so and this process is completely the same like the previous one completely the same but it's a little bit longer because you're now creating a lot smaller triangles so i will now fast forward this again and see you in a few moments All right, I just finished the eye and now let's go to the nose and try to be as much precise as you can to have a really nice representation of a lion here or any animal or thing you choose to convert into this, this low poly state, right? Let me see. That's wrong, I messed here. Okay. Let's choose like so. And then of course I will fast forward it again because you don't need to watch this in real time because it's really boring and you will practice on your own files and you will see how this looks like Alex in real time, right? And I think we are done. Let me see. Let's hide the mesh. And yes, that's really, really nice. We have some uh, mistakes here. This is the one that I leave purposely. And let me see. I think we have some smaller ones here too. Yeah, this here and this here. And I will show you now how to fix it. But this really, really looks good for now, right? All right, guys. Now let's correct that small uh, imperfections that we left for the end. And go and duplicate the uh, left uh, side of the lion's head to the right side to complete the lion's head. Let's do it. Right, before we do that, we need to make sure that all those layers are in 100% opacity. So we go to the first one, all the way up, all the way up, right? And then I will go to the last one and hold control or command key sorry go to the last one and hold shift key and click on the last one just to go there okay click on the last one and just move the opacity a little bit to the left and then all the way to 100 percent and now everything is in the 100 percent opacity we can group all this layer by pressing ctrl command g why not and let's go here and go to the top to the first layer and use the pen tool to fill this gap so just select around this gap like so and press control enter to load the selection now use the brush uh, by pressing alt or option key choose sample the color and now hold alt or option key with the backspace to fill this selection with that color and now we have fixed that and let's go find another spot that we missed this one right here we can do it on the same layer doesn't matter right let's go here here and here control or command enter brush choose this color and alter option key with the backspace just fill it right mm, i miss this part i will fill it with the brush so hard right and i will use brush again choose this color and just 
fill this. Let me see. I think that's okay. If we miss mess, uh, miss something up, we will. If we miss something, we will correct that later. Let's close the group, and now let's close this, and I will duplicate the group by pressing Control Command J, hide the original group, and now. When I have selected this group, I will press Ctrl or Command E on a keyboard to just merge everything from the group into one layer, right? And now I will duplicate this one more time, Ctrl Command J. Now transform it, Ctrl or Command T, and I will use this a rotation point and put it all the way to the right. And now right click, flip horizontal, and press OK. And now we have our lion. You can see this line, but uh, you will not see when you merge everything together. And now we have our line finished, basically. Right, you can you can now play with this. You can go to this layer down below, put the curves on it, clip it, and maybe, let me see, maybe make, make this darker, this part, maybe darker and more contrasty, like so, and go here and put another curve, clip it here and make it brighter, like just to have that 3D effect that this part is in the shadows, maybe, why not? And maybe something, something like so, or maybe this part is too much, like this, okay, and that's really nice. If you bother with, if this line bothers you, we'll fix it really, really quickly. We'll go and select all of these, press Ctrl, Command E, and now we will not have this line. We have this as a new layer. Right, next thing what you can do, you can use a pen tool and maybe you can cut some parts off that you don't want with the delete tool or use a polygonal lasso tool and just, just cut those parts, maybe I don't like this to be visible. Or you can reshape, reshape the, the head, oops. You can reshape the head here as ever you like. Let me see. Yeah, maybe it's better like this. It's just personal preference and you can do what I really like with this. Let me see, maybe like so and delete. And maybe this is what I like. This is my line. And for the end, you can, of course, create some shadow, drop shadow down below with uh, this elliptical marquee tool. Just create some shadow like so. Okay, choose any dark color from here. Maybe this one and Fill this. You can of course make this make uh, this shadow a little bit blurrier with the Gaussian blur. Okay, as much as you like, something like so maybe, and lower the opacity like this, and that's really really nice. Of course, you can reshape this line as ever you want. You can go even to to the liquify tool and just reshape this better okay maybe like this to be a little bit down below these are the ears right here i will reshape this a little bit and maybe something like this all right and what you can do next is to maybe dodge and burn this why not you can play with this whatever you can do whatever you want right this is for dodge and i will dodge with really soft brush and 10% opacity. I will dodge this part right here. Okay. Just add some tridimensionality to that. Okay. And maybe this part right here and this part. Why not? And maybe make this part a little bit lighter and I can burn something. I can make some part darker right and maybe this part right here and right here from this side of the nose okay and maybe this part a little bit darker and this part maybe i i should make those ears 
even uh, higher res than I did now, but you can play with that as ever you want. It's up to you later to play with this. I just show you how you can, you can do that. Okay, and maybe this a little bit darker, why not? And this is our lion. This is really, really nice. You can merge everything together, go to maybe, mm, yeah, merge everything together, go to filter and camera row. Then you can maybe boost the contrast and clarity, maybe exposure a little bit up. You can add some vignetting here. You can sharpen even a little bit like so before and after really, really nice. And of course you can lower the saturation or boost the saturation of, of the lion and play with a little bit with uh, color temperature. And that's it. You can, you can do really, really a lot of things right here. Okay. And this is before and after, before and after. All right, guys, that's it for today. It was a little bit longer episode, but I hope that you like it and that you learn something new out of it. This is really easy, but time consuming effect to create, but you can have a lot of fun with this after. You can use it in some photo manipulation as a face mask, as you can see on internet, that paper mask of uh, some animal people are using for photo shooting, you can create uh, in Photoshop and then just put it on somebody's face or you can put, make your logo out of this or I don't know anything the possibilities uh, are really really uh, wide so your creativity is the limit have fun experiment practice uh, invest sometimes some time to uh, master this effect and when you master it of course you will uh, even more enjoy creating it and you will know when uh, to use smaller triangles, when you can use bigger triangles and so on and so on. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye.